and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And thank you for improvising last week. I have had two years in a row, I've had this crazy allergic reaction somehow to something outdoors. And my eyes get like runny and itchy and everything. And then the outside of my eyes gets chapped. And then my entire Ooh. eyes lid swell. It's like the most bizarre thing. And there's like nothing, nothing immediate to revive. It, <laughs> it takes like a week. So... My eyes were a mess. There was no way I was doing it. Anyway, TV. we had fun, Brittany yep. and I. Yep. Uh, she's such a wonderful she woman. Is. I really hope she. Uh, I hope she, she gets, gets elected, elected because this she's time. she's a good she's a keeper. She's a good egg. Yep. Um, I have very dramatic makeup. I'm not sure if people can see it from back home, but that's because I went to a Rocky Horror Picture Show sing along movie birthday party last night. So um, <laughs> I was like, oh, I can't get this teal off my <laughs> eyes. I'll just <laughs> lean into it. So yeah. <laughs> that's where we're at this morning. <laughs> so um, three weeks from today is the municipal election. So yep. first, you- first Tuesday in November. First Tuesday of November, three weeks from today, November 2nd. Um, if you are planning on voting absentee, um, you should get your ballot and get it back because you don't want to wait until the last minute. But, you know, just come on November 2nd and vote in person. There's really no, unless you work out of town or whatever, there's really no reason. Um, so that's coming along quickly. Yes. Um, Does uh, Victoria have any events coming up? Yeah, Victoria has a fundraiser um, this Thursday. So if you're watching this on Facebook, you'll see this ahead of time. This Thursday at Soho Bistro, which is right there on Old Granite Street. Great little place. Um, Is that new? I haven't been there yet. It's new. It's not. And I think it's the same owners, but they changed it from, I don't know, I want to say Willie's or something. It used to be more of a dance club, and now it's more of like a bistro. And uh, we did eat there last week, and um, it... Dan did to decide that right now that's he has the best wings in town. Oh, we're so, having a wing yeah. off. Well, we always try the wings places. I have to say Murphy's got a new chef, and yes. I had wings there last time I was there, and they were pretty tasty. Yeah, we're I mean, I, I think, had, like, literally plain wings because I was like, I yeah, don't know which sauce has know. sugar in and stuff. And they were really tasty. So yeah, you're we're doing gonna, a taste uh, Dan test. doesn't realize it, but I think we're going to go to Murphy's for dinner tonight. We haven't been in a while. Just for no particular reason. And I was like, oh, maybe we'll go. They have tap room Tuesday. And I'll go and we'll have dinner there so I don't have to cook. Um, But it's Thursday night, October 14th. Soho Bistro tickets are 50 bucks. Includes food. um, So you get to check out Soho. At the same time that you can support Victoria Sullivan for mayor. Um, You can get information on that um, on Eventbrite, probably the easiest place, or on Facebook. Cool. you can just show up and give us 50 bucks. Yeah. Just show up at Soho I'm Thursday night. Um, <laughs> so. Yes. What is up? Okay. First, what is up with Nicole Klein Knight? Is she like just nuts? I mean, you know, like there are people who, no matter what happens in their life, they seem to have this political narrative that they must follow. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I try not to get sucked into that same type of thing in my own life. Um, She's the one who you might have remembered. She was in when they oh, were. Oh, she had the plague mask. She had the right? big plague beak mask when they were meeting at the soccer fields for legislative sessions. And then there was another picture of her, and she had this big clear bubble umbrella, which made absolutely no sense. Um, she definitely had a face shield last election yeah. season up at Ward Four. Yeah, and there was a picture was of her at the sign prim- waving with her. There was a picture at the primary from Ward Four that I saw, and everybody's standing over there, and she was standing like on the other side of the street, and whatever. Um, but do know that Nicole Klein Knight also has been go- during the primary was out door knocking maskless. Okay. Um, she's been seen at different campaign fundraisers and in different campaign offices maskless and now she's annoyed at the world because she has COVID as does Jim O'Connell apparently okay so I don't really understand why there's so many people who are so pro vaccine and so much willing to want me to d- change my lifestyle they are doing whatever they're doing that they're still getting COVID but Nicole took to the Facebook and the tweets and all that stuff um to say actually I'm going to read it because I don't want to put words in her mouth um She says, in a posting on Twitter Friday morning, so this was last Friday, she said she was infected and in turn has infected her family and blames House Speaker Sherman Packard for allowing sick members (laughs) 
to participate without masks. She Her Twitter post reads, I'm positive for COVID, mostly due to the fact that New Hampshire speaker allowed sick members to participate unmasked and come into contact and furthermore did not notify me. I since infected my entire family. If there's any legal action I can take out. Okay. So I was like, what? Oh, Everybody's allowed to go. I, something didn't sound right. So then I started. So, so, so are we going to just, you know, I'm just going to jump mm, in there for two seconds. Fine. So are we going to start suing people who give us uh, colds and flu and COVID and or whatever? Or cause my psoriasis to flare up. Flare up or, or, you know, I mean, this is a pretty well, slippery well, slope. Uh, and folks right. will remember that when we said a year and a half ago, this is going to open a can of worms. That's yep. going to be a slippery slope. I think our words have bared so out. So I started Googling because I wanted to know, because I was like, well, so what actually happened? Because that doesn't sound like something the uh, Sherm Packard would be like, it's okay, you got COVID, you should come to the state house anyways. And I'm like, that sounded crazy. So I did find um, another article from New Hampshire Journal. Okay. Um, and it includes some a timeline from Representative Kevin Verbal because Kevin Verbal did t post on Facebook that he had COVID okay. and thank you everybody for your support and blah, blah, blah. So now he's on the Criminal Justice Committee. Okay. Nicole klein Knight is on the Criminal Justice Committee. I made a leap and figured, aha. Okay. So I'm going to read this because now keep in mind, Nicole klein Knight believes that as a legislator, she was required to participate in a committee meeting at the state house where unmasked positive COVID people were. Okay. Kevin Verbal says, I was tested for COVID-19 on the morning of Friday, September 24th. Is this the same Friday? Nope. Okay. Nope. Different Friday. I received my test results in the, or my test results the next day and was found to be COVID negative. So on the 24th of, se of September, Kevin Verbal's COVID negative. Based on those results, I continued to conduct myself no differently than I have for the past 18 months because I don't have, he didn't have COVID. I attended the Rockingham County delegation meeting on the evening of Monday, September 27th. On Tuesday, September 28th, I attended a subcommittee hearing on a bill I filed last year that had been retained by the house. I was in that meeting room for approximately one hour. I sat in the audience seating, well away from all other participants for the entire meeting, except to quickly say goodbye at the end of the meeting. Okay. I did not linger near others at any time during this meeting. It is interesting that the representative from Manchester, Nicole Klein Knight, has been making unsubstantiated claims against myself and others relative to spreading COVID, was not a member of this particular subcommittee in question. Interesting. She spent a solid five or 10 minutes arguing with the chair of the subcommittee at the start of the meeting relative to whether she was a member of the subcommittee or not. Once it was confirmed, confirmed that she was not a member of the subcommittee, she chose to, she chose to remain at the meeting, which is her right as any other person for that matter. Okay. The bill in question should, would have closed a loophole in the existing law that was intended to prevent registered sex offenders from hiring, supervising, and or working with minor children. She advocated for not closing the loophole. I mention this simply to state that she only appeared because she was confused about where and when she was required to be in attendance. If she had been as concerned about the situation as she later alleged, she simply could have chosen to leave the meeting. There was no requirement for her to be there. On the evening of Wednesday, September 29th, after dinner, at, I went to take a rest, as is my regular routine. At about 8.30, I spiked a fever. It was then that I proactively chose to go to urgent care, was again tested for COVID based on my symptoms. That's when I tested positive. So he tested positive after he the was at the meeting me. okay. that she didn't need to be at. Okay. Um, I contacted leadership and notified them of every place and every time that I had spent around others, including the Rockingham County delegation meeting and the House Judiciary Subcommittee meeting, I isolated as recommended by healthcare professionals at urgent care. It's my opinion that I conducted myself in a safe and reasonable manner. I did nothing to knowingly expose others to COVID. In fact, the big mystery in my mind is where I contracted COVID-19. I had no close contact. So it goes on. So you do have to speculate. So he didn't have COVID-19 to the best of his knowledge. She didn't have COVID-19 to the best of her knowledge. Other members of the de the Democrat delegation in Manchester, not state rep, other members of the, the people actively campaigning in Manchester do have COVID-19. She claims that she went to a meeting she was required to be at, that she wasn't required to meet at, chose to voluntarily stay there, unmasked, I'm presuming. Then she claims she was tested spent all of her $200 that she's paid um, 
in salary for being a state rep to be tested. She tested negative. Okay. Went to Massachusetts to visit an aunt that's had numerous organ transplants. Okay. Which, I don't know about you, even if I'm testing negative, why are you going to visit somebody who's risky, right? Well, that risky. Numerous (laughs) organ transplants. Well, that's the claim she says. Okay, wow. And then... um, Come to find out at some point did test Nick positive. Now, keep in mind, she I presume she's vaccinated. So was she positive early on and had low s- symptoms? But this is the problem. They're quick to point and say, you gave me COVID because you have COVID. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Maybe, you gave me maybe COVID because you maybe have COVID. Maybe the cold line night gave Kevin Vernal the COVID. I mean, so, so the bottom line for me is this this kind of crap it's is insane. absurd. It is absurd. Absurd. Why are we spending time talking about people who have, you know, a, a, a thing that's around a virus that has a 99.97% survival rate that people can get vaccinated for if they want to? And, you know, so we it's went, just, it's, it's, we went it's from, insanity at this We went stage. from, you need to get vaccinated because this will stop the spread of COVID. Let's just say, okay, right? Then... We found out that it didn't stop the spread of COVID. It only reduced the symptoms when you catch COVID. For the people who are vaccinated. For, the, for those who are vaccinated. But like, again, okay. Well, while also the vaccinated people are causing things like the Delta strains and any kind of right. more virulent strain well, because we are now in this cycle. those vaccinated people cycle. have stopped being careful about what they're doing. I can tell you that there are various candidates forums being planned right now in Manchester where... Elderly people will be in attendance, and those who are vaccinated are the ones that are going Vulnerable, unmasked, frankly, yeah. where the people who aren't vaccinated are protecting themselves from possibly infecting them with anything. So you went for or just going about their business as they've always done. Well, I mean, you know, if, if you're feeling sick, stay at home, and if you're and not feeling sick, so just now, get on with your life. Let's see, the vaccinated people can get COVID, spread COVID, but I still need to get the vaccine oh, because and- I don't know why and then now no no but you so you can get covid spread covid but we're only firing people who are unvaccinated i don't well, get and it I mean, I don't, it just does it no stupid. it if you thought it made logical sense at this point it has never made logical it, sense it has all never of these it's things just along it. the way and then i this is just a personal like i don't get people so let's just say i was vaccinated i got vaccinated so that my symptoms would be less severe I knew I could still spread it. I knew all these other things, but I don't want to get super sick. That I can understand that. I understand why, you know, elderly people might want to do this so that they don't get as sick. Fine. Then somehow I still get COVID. Now I'm assuming that the, if this vaccine works for even that, my symptoms weren't terrible. Right. And I recovered. Or why? now you're a vector walking around but because you don't say, really feel sick and you're just you know, spreading the Delta if, variant If I everywhere. stayed home and I didn't st- talk to anybody and I got over COVID and I had low symptoms, why are those people who now have the vaccine to reduce symptoms and the antibodies to prevent further infections, why are they so angry at other people they have like the holy grail of COVID. They've got all Temi, the things. Temi, none of it makes sense. I will tell you the following. So the uh, the original COVID warning that they slap all over the propaganda uh, from big tech on Facebook and that kind of stuff. The the warning came and originally it said it is the vaccine is safe and effective for all. Right. Okay. That current statement is now it is safe for most. So it is no longer it's no effective, longer effective they can't and it claim might harm that, you. And it doesn't oh. actually, you know, work like they said it would, right? So there's that. They've taken uh the definition of vaccine and entirely changed yeah, because it. It's so not we're a literally vaccine. just watching news speak happen. Like yep. it's so Orwellian. It is it is it's bizarre. Bizarre. Like you can't you can't make this stuff then, up. Then I'm sure you saw that this Facebook whistleblower person came out. So this lady, literally, they're they're calling her a whistleblower. She's not a whistleblower. How do we know? Because when you're a vis- whistleblower, you get treated like Edward Snowden or Julian Assange. The state doesn't like you when you release their secrets. This woman is probably an intelligence asset. But so the day Facebook went down, yes, when uh. Pornhub's usage went up by 10%. That should tell you how toxic 
something like Facebook actually is, that you're taking that same sort of like mindless, scrolling, mm. like, oh, dopamine hit and just transferring it somewhere else. So she she dropped while Facebook was down, right? And yeah. then the stories came up and it sort of came out of Twitter and people like Hillary Clinton were, oh, we must support this whistleblower. And I'm a fan of whistleblowers. Right? So I was like, oh, we should see what does this lady have to say? So she literally is saying, we should censor the internet more. Um, now, the people who claim we've been spreading misinformation for years uh, have to constantly be dialing it back, right? Because right. the misinformation uh, is things like, what is herd immunity? They literally changed the definition of that. Uh, oh, natural immunity doesn't work or doesn't count. Why? Why would natural? Oh, is it because it's free? Right. You know, so well, it's it, just, right. we're in crazy town at this stage. Um, I found I found a um, thing from the Japanese, mm. uh, the uh, Pfizer's Japanese application, yeah. their report that they put in to say, uh, this is what we are submitting in order to get emergency authorization right? in Japan. The parts that tell you what the things in the vaccine are supposed to do to you are redacted. Right. So if you have a, like, how can you have informed consent? If you when won't. it literally says this novel excipient we've never used before, and this one is supposed to do something. Well, and so like now, Oh, I'm sure you all saw this that, before the screen grabs that, <laughs> that the weather caused yes. Southwest to cancel, you know, 1,800 flights or something like that. I think it's up to 3,000, and I have to fly this weekend, so I'm so torn. But oh, I'm no. like, so uh, what was funny? Not funny. What I thought found interesting. So a friend of mine, uh, Corey Wood, who works with B Mike Biondo and Derek Dufresne at Ascent Strategic, he was in Florida, and his flight got canceled. And he goes, and it stinks that my flight got canceled, but good for Southwest yeah. and ever, and the and all the airline people for standing up for themselves because to force to force entire companies of people to uh, companies to fire their employees if they refuse to take an injection of stuff that has only been up on the market untested for nine months is absurd. It's ludicrous. It is absolutely absurd and good for the people from Southwest or the um, TSA or whoever, everybody that stepped back and said, you know what, I'm not coming to work because you need to know what's going to happen. Firemen, you think you can policemen, um, all those people, you know, know that there are millions, there are millions of people who have their backs and, and it's up to them. You're going to have it's to say no. It's just I have, I have a friend who works in a particular, um, defense contractor situation. Offense, but sure. And, <laughs> um, they, they're losing engineers, not to, due to the COVID virus, but due to the COVID vaccine. Yeah. Because those people who are otherwise highly intelligent are like, no way am I taking this. I'll quit my freaking highly paid defense contractor job before I do it. And I'm like, so I don't think people realize how this is gonna play out. Well, and I think it's important, I actually posted this this morning and tweeted it out as well, is basically what's going on is, there are, there are uh, various people have written about this. Ron Paul wrote a book, Naomi Wolf wrote a mm. book. I'd say his is from the right, hers is from the left, but basically both of them were like, what are the steps to fascism? Yeah. And one of the things you have to do at some stage, you have to purge the people who will not comply. So <laughs> you wanna get rid of the people who will not just follow orders. Because at some stage when, you, you know, assuming we are on this track towards fascism, right? and I think it's really hard to argue we're not at this stage. I mean, it's very likely that we're gonna have some real economic hardships that are coming out. Yep. CNN yesterday, posted the following term in explaining why we need to get used to shortages and nothing on the shelves. In the before times. The before times. The before times. In the now, before times. Everyone back home, go reread 1984, please. You know, when we talk about Orwellian and Newspeak and the Panopticon and like this stuff, it is happening before your eyes. And it's troubling. 
And I think that the people like the folks from Southwest and anyone who is just saying no, it is a human right to refuse medical treatment. Right. How about that? So, you know, I don't before know. Before time. What, the before time. Before the times. crazy time. <laughs> the before times. I mean, before that's just times. basically new new speak, right? So it's it's creepy. It's out there. It's getting worse. Um, YouTube took down any show that mentions anything that has to do with vaccine hesitancy or mandates or any counter narrative. In the meanwhile, things like this are also happening. The CDC just magically took off the words at the top of their page where they talk about whether vaccines cause autism. It was always like a giant thing on their thing. Saying no, no, no. In the last two weeks, they just, that just disappeared. So it's like, hmm. Um, in various Scandinavian countries and a large swath of Europe, they have actually stopped using both Moderna and AstraZeneca for uh, teens and youths uh, because the the harm of the vaccine outweighs mm, the, the risk very the low risk of actually getting COVID. And so I encourage people, go do your own homework. If you're, honestly, I think if you're under 65, just... Well, just be Everyone's- healthy. Be healthy. Don't do stupid stuff. Just don't get any. You know what? I was talking- be healthy. I was talking to Victoria this morning, and she's like, "How about we all just don't get in each other's faces ever?" <laughs> I didn't want somebody getting up in my space in the before times. <laughs> I, I I don't need like there's 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 personal space guidelines in life in general, and you know what? Be careful. Don't do stupid things. Don't if you're sick. Whether you have a stomach virus, whether you think you have COVID, whether you've got the chicken pox, whatever right. you think you might have, if you don't feel well, you should have been staying home and are away from people all along. So tomorrow uh, at the police training and what's it called? Something standards. Standards and training in Concord is where the next uh, executive council meeting will be held. Uh, you will call for the folks back home yeah. that we had one a couple of weeks ago, and that was uh, at St. Anselm's in Goffstown. Yeah. It has now been moved to the police <laughs> training standards and training. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to go, but I want to tell people, especially on Facebook or back home, that you uh, should feel comfortable raising your voice. I was really moved by Christine Green, Christine, uh, Christine, I guess, as uh, op-ed in today's newspaper, uh, she said, still live free or die. And she talks a little bit about this whole notion of the name calling, right? So one of the things you'll see is people don't, um, they don't address the issues you bring up. Like no one has no. come back to me Trump. and said, oh, <laughs> they I don't just know. They something at right? you. Yeah, they don't understand, you know, that. They don't want to have a dialogue. Like no one wants to go, oh, maybe you have a justified thing. How can you have informed consent if they're redacting what the thing's supposed to do to you, right? All they'll do is they'll call you conspiracy theorists. You're a racist, you're, you're, you're a Trump extremist, extremist or, or you're, you that. know, all these crazy things that, because so, whatever. So this lady says, some media and legislators diminish label and marginalize this new face of protest. So she was talking about the fact that this is just teachers and lawyers and doctors and firemen and engineers and nurses and pharmacists and everyone who's coming together, right? They know we would be too strong together. So they do everything in their power to silence and divide us. Mm -hmm. But these protesters are our teachers, doctors, pastors, employers, co-workers, family, and friends. It is time for us to rally in unison to fight against anything that threatens the sovereignty of our state and bodies. We need to exercise our First Amendment rights while it is still allowed. In the context, I can finally agree with the slogan, we are all in this together. The next time you read an article or hear our governor or others refer to those protesting as fringe, extreme, conspiracy theorists, or any other condescending label, consider this quote by Margaret Thatcher. I always cheer up immense. Oh, I'm going to do it in a British <laughs> accent. I always cheer up immensely if an attack is particularly wounding because I think, well, if they attack one person, one personally, it means they must not have a single political argument 
left. True. Very, very true. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, I know we're going to run out of time. I do want to do some shameless plugs. The, the, um, the housing thing, there's something going on today. Go check Josiah Bartlett Center. Yeah. I think they have another event tomorrow night. This is to do with regulations. The more zoning you have, the less affordable housing you have. Fix the zoning. Yep. Um, on October 31st, there is the 7th Annual Manchester Brewfest from 2 to 5 in the afternoon at Arms Park. A um, hundred local and regional craft beers and local foods. Um, it's a 21 and older event. That you do have to buy tickets. It's rain or shine. Um, and it go, the, the funds go to charity. I forget exactly what the, the benefit is, but it, I thought it was kind of something nice. I try to remember that I like to plug things that are happening in town before they happen. Um, Halloween trick-or-treating is happening on Halloween. I know that's a crazy concept. Um, in the <laughs> evening, also a crazy concept. Um, and that's just in another couple weeks. You know, just start buying your candy now and get your decorations out there. Anyways, um, that's it. Check out my book, The Ecstatic Pessimist, uh, available on Amazon and on my website, Carla Garrett. If you have any uh, questions about anything we read on the show, um, both of the articles that Carla was referring to are in today, Tuesday, October 12th, Union Leader, right on the opinion page. Um, well worth a read. Um, if you have any questions about shows that we've had, if you have any questions about the upcoming election in three weeks, any of that stuff, feel free to email us at manchtalk at gmail.com and we'll get back to you. Um, that's all we really got. Enjoy the outdoors. We have a beautiful weather week. We ahead live of in us. a candy land. It's, it's the best uh, it's time of the year. It's absolutely beautiful. We are like just now, we went to, um, out in Auburn did one of the pipe, the massive basic ones and um, the colors are really mm. prime and I'm sure this weekend will be gorgeous as well. So get out there, take a walk. I drove up to Maine on Saturday and it was perfect. That means it'll be perfect here next week. Anyways, that's all we got. Bye we'll guys. See you next week. Bye.